Hey, this is V2 Reviews, or Version 2 Reviews, I haven't actually came up with a title complete yet, but yeah. So, um, today we're going to be reviewing the Memorax Clock Radio for the iPod, and apparently one version of the iPod Touch. See, there's a picture of it right here. Yeah, um, unless you read the fine print, that can be a little bit misleading, because you're like, oh, iPod Touch, I should go out and buy this and use it on my iPod Touch, and you, I'm like, um, yeah. Apparently, let's see if I can find a little index on the side. Huh. It must be on the paperwork. Anyway, so... Let me put this on the screen so you can at least take a look at it. And I'll rotate it so you can re see it while I'm going on and on about it. Okay, so a while back, Apple started making all their stuff protected so you can't just, like, use any accessory on it. Um... I think it was like 2007 or 8 or something, don't quote me on that, I'll, I should have looked it up before I started this video. Anyway, so a while back Apple started making it so you can't use like just any accessory on your product. It has to be like an official Apple product or a, or a company that's actually like working with Apple or something like that, so. Um, basically, if you have like an iPod Touch 2nd generation, 3rd or 4th or whatever, or an iPhone, then this will not work for you. Uh, so yeah, if you have one of those and you're thinking about getting it because of that, then go ahead and get off the review right now. Sorry. Um, okay, um, as for features go, let's see if I can find my actual iPod. One second, I should have been prepared, but you know, if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know I'm never prepared. Alright. Got my iPod right here. Fifth generation iPod. 30 gigabytes. Hey, you can see me. Hi. Forgot how shiny these things were. Alright. So, first thing I'm going to talk about is the design itself. You got your nice size speaker and your tiny, tiny buttons. And remote control. Oh, man. Oh, here it is. Alright. We got our remote right here. So, an interesting thing about the design of this is, even though it allows for radio, let's see, here's your little antenna you can take to your wall or whatever, and it allows line in, and it allows you to hook up your iPod, and you got your buttons, I already said that, never mind. Okay, so each of these modes you can use for listening to music. So let's say I want to listen to something from my computer, even though my computer has speakers, I might just want to listen to it through this thing. Just plug this into the back. I'll show you. It's a little stiff and instantly it switches to line in mode. Let me see if I can show you. Right there. Line in. Now if I was to place me on my computer like this they'll play from the speaker. Which is pretty nice, so if you, so you, they probably advertise it saying, oh yeah, you don't even need an iPod to use this thing. Well, about that, um, sure, you can listen to any kind of MP3 player on this thing. Right here, I have a Sansa Fuse, which well, won't plug into the dock. It can still be plugged in if I plugged in an audio jack from here to the back. And no, the audio jack is not included. I'll see if I can include a link or whatever. Um, as for the features, since I'm already like four minutes into the video, I'm really bad with time management. Um, it is pretty good for sound and stuff. I'll show you what I'm trying to say as soon as my iPod starts up. I had to restart it. The volume is the one thing I want to address. I mean, sure, it, it gets nice and loud, but they need to adjust the intervals. like. Volume 1, the quietest you can possibly have without turning off, is still really, really, is still, like, noticeable. So, instead of just being able to hear maybe the tune, you can hear pretty much everything that's being said. Which is okay if you're sleeping like, across the room, but if you're not sleeping across the room, not so great. Another thing is Illuminator. It's bright. Very bright. Like, even on the lowest setting. You may say, oh, that's not that bright. Let me turn off the lights and show you. Still pretty bright. Turn off my monitor. Yeah. You might say, well, that doesn't look that bright. 
that's because it's like daytime. It's, it, it illuminates a lot. So if you're like trying to sleep and you still want to be able to see what time it is, then you look over and you see this like giant light coming at you. I mean, it's either that or this. You won't be able to see anything. So super bright, medium, low. I mean, that doesn't bother me that much. I mean, you can just put it on a table like across the room so you're not exactly just directly staring at it, but then you won't be able to see the time. I guess you could like roll over and see it. But that's inconvenient, so that's one main strike against it. All right, so as far as audio goes, let's see if I can bring up some music that won't get me in trouble. All right, music. Uh, albums, one second. I waste a lot of time in these videos, I realize. Oh, past it. Play something from Newgrounds Audio Portal. <laughs> Alright. This is apparently the Halo theme, metalized by someone from the Newgrounds Audio pi uh, Portal. Okay. So when you plug in your iPod, it automatically recognizes it's an iPod, and it will also automatically pause it for you. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a bit. Yep, you can see the little pause icon. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the main thing I was talking about, the um, volume intervals. See? Instead of going smoothly from volume to volume like you normally can off an iPod, it's extremely choppy. And this is volume one. It may not sound that bad, but you're just listening to it on a YouTube on, on a video. If you were actually in the same room, it's extremely noticeable. It's not it's not very soft at all. And then you have the choppy going up. The volume goes up to 15, I think. Okay, as for alarm, the thing I was saying about how you can't really just use like literally any MP3 player to pick up, that is because while yes you can plug it into the back, you can't use it as an alarm. You might be saying, what? Why can't I use the thing as an alarm? Well, because even though it supports the ability to plug in any MP3 player, you have no way of charging it. So, because there's no like USB port on the back where you can just plug in this thing into. So, essentially, you can either, and also, yeah, so um, essentially the only thing you can hear, wake up to is your iPod or the radio or the buzzer. And the buzzer even at the highest volume is not very that loud. It's not very loud. I wish I could show it to you, but I mean, I have to reset my alarm settings basically. So, um, as for sound quality, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, for 40 bucks, I think I paid for it on Amazon, it, it's okay. But one other problem you may have is, since the speaker's facing directly up, if you have your fan on, it may sound a little distorted. Let's see if I can do that. Oops, came unplugged. I don't know if you can hear that, but right now, I lifted up like one foot off my desk and the audio is getting distorted by the fan and that's one other thing I don't like about it. So again, if you can't really hear it, that probably means one, it's the compression, or two, you, you, you just don't notice as much as stuff about audio. I mean, if you, if you don't really care and you just want something to wake up to your iPod, there's tons of other things about the same price, so. It more goes down to what you want. I mean, I haven't tested any other clock radio for the iPods, so. I don't know if the other ones that you listen that wake up to anything you want or whatever, or if the other one has a better buzzer or whatever. So I can't possibly say that this is better or worse than anything else. All I can say is how you know if you want to buy it or not. I mean, if you just want something that's simple and easy to set up, this is probably one of the easiest things to set up. I mean, it took me a little while, but now it's easy. Let's say you want to turn off your alarm. I mean, you're like, or you say, oh, well, oh, I can't find my iPod, it's, it's gone, oh man, it's already still set the iPod on the little dial thing, you can't really see it here, but it says iPod right here, like, oh, that means it's not going to wake me up, okay, you want to change it, no technical know-how needed, all you have to do is find a button that says alarm, it's right here, click it, 
Now alarm has instantly switched to radio. Mine is on the default station 87.5. And you say, okay, well, I don't want to listen to the radio either. I get bad reception. Hit alarm again. It's now set to use the buzzer. Personally, I'm a really deep sleeper, so the buzzer doesn't wake me up even at loudest volume, but you can do whatever you want. And let's say you don't want your alarm at all. You have a day off, you don't even want anything to bother you wake up, and you don't want to have to try to remember to find a switch or something on the side, because that's hard to see. Hit the alarm again, it's completely turned off. All right, and the other thing that's really easy is, let's say you just want to stop listening to your music. You don't want to pause it, you just want to um, have your iPod charge while you sleep. The power button's right here. You turn you can turn on radio, you can turn off radio. So if nothing's plugged in and you just want to listen to radio, hit the on button. The play button's right here, really easy to access. You got your skip. And all these buttons are labeled for what they do in both modes. Like if you have it turned off, so no radio's playing and no iPod's plugged in or whatever, and all these buttons go to the second feature. They're labeled. Set time, let's see if I can show you how close. You got your set time, your alarm set, and then your minute and hour. So it's a really, really simple setup, and I really like the design. But the one thing that really, really bugs me is the snooze button. Well, yeah, it's big, and yeah, you want to hit it if you're really, really tired and need the extra sleep. The snooze button also does something else. It turns off the light. Which is a big problem for me, because I don't want to, like, every time, like, I, I want to sleep in, oh, and then I, like, look over, and I say, oh, what time is it? I have to walk all the way up here, push it again, and then it's super bright, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm late. <laughs> so, yeah, um, <clears throat> that's one of the main problems I have is the snooze button. The sound quality is really good. The ability to plug in anything you want, but you just can't wake up to it, it's a uh, kind of win-lose thing. I mean, sure, you can listen to anything, but... Why would you want to listen, wake up to the radio when you can listen, wake up to your own music? So, this is pretty much mainly for people who have iPods. And the older generation ones, basically, I'm guessing since it doesn't work on the later iPod touches, it probably doesn't work on the 6th generation iPod. I'm not entirely sure. Again, I can't find where it says under the box. You can probably look in the description or read through other people's comments. But, yeah, wow, I'm way up to 20, 12 minutes. Okay, well... YouTube channel things right down there on the bottom of the page, or at least it should, on the bottom of the video. So check out my YouTube channel. I got a bunch of other reviews for other stuff, mainly audio stuff, and so that seems to be what I'm mostly buying now. Um, yeah. All right. So see ya.